so I got in the stall and I put on a sweater and I rolled the shirt up and threw it in my bag and washed my face and looked at, okay, I got on the plane, I didn't look like a terrorist. But anyway, <laughs> one of the problems with this, 85% of the world's population has a death wish. They're playing two things. They're playing hiding, they're playing waiting to die. Most of the people in our culture were from one of the seven major religions, Islam, Judeo, Christian, and many others. They all came from the same roots, Father Abraham, etc. They all teach that at one time you walked with God in the garden, you were expelled from eating of the tree of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. Anyway, you fell from grace. The cherubim were put there with fiery <coughs> swords to keep you from getting back. Now you have to work by the sweat of your brow. You're born under this original sin, and the only way you're going to get home free and get to heaven is to suffer a lot and be meek and humble. And that was put in you before you were four and a half years old. So it sticks, baby. If you're a Catholic, you're not going to change. If you're a Presbyterian, you might not change. If you're a Muslim, you will never change. But all of these people think that they're going to get another gold star on their gluteus maximus and go to heaven if they suffer enough. If you got on the Queen for a Day show and you've got ten sick children at home and a husband who just broke his leg and can't go to work, guess who gets the washing machine? Because the lady right next to you only had nine sick children and her husband is still getting around somehow. It's the person who has the most suffering that picks up the most charge, that picks up the most secondary gains. Here's George, a 60-year-old aerospace engineer at McDonnell Douglas, who gets cancer. He gets to go to bed and read. His wife is bringing him chicken soup. The kids are being respectful and not screaming in his presence. His neighbors are coming around, oh, isn't it awful that you've got terminal cancer? That man has got secondary gains. He knows that if he gets well, he's got to go back there and compete with the younger engineers who just got out of college and the people who run computers better than I ever will, etc. These people want to die. They think that the only relief from this planet of painful endeavor is death, <clears throat> and if they haven't sinned, they might go to heaven. And then they'll have four wives if you're Muslim, or 25 if you're Mo Mormon. I don't know. I don't want to get into this. <laughs> but it's always better. It's the promise of arrival. And if he were damn perfect, he'd be in heaven or hell to begin with. So I guess Carl Simonton, when he was married to Stephanie Simonton, the radiologist, found out about secondary gains. He would give people the suggestion that the white knights, the T cells, the white cells in your blood, are knights on shining armor, riding around with lances, sparing those cancer cells. And those people would change that meditation, that hypnosis, to make those, the black knights, would let the black knights win that made more cancer cells. So he developed a test. What could you be getting out of having cancer? And they said, no, I'm not getting anything out of this. Well. What could your neighbor be getting? Oh, he's staying in bed, and he's reading, and he's, his insurance policy is feeding him, and his wife's bringing him chicken soup, you know, all the wonderful things he's got, secondary gains, and that's where we're at, kids. If you tell a hundred people of this, about this, about 15 of them will believe you and read the paper and try it. The other 85 are going to demand more proof. They want to die. They don't want anything to interrupt these secondary gains. The AIDS patients are getting free food, free massages, basket weaving classes. I've talked to the Gay and Lesbian Support Center on Garden Grove Boulevard, 13229 Garden Grove Boulevard, Santa Ana. They throw me out. Oh, well, you bum, you know there isn't any cure for HIV. I said, won't you people try it? Surely you have somebody here who wants to live. Oh, no, we're getting along fine with Burroughs Welcome. As I say, I've been blooded by ACTA. They're being paid. It used to be Burroughs Welcome. It's now Glaxo Welcome. 
I've, I've got stories out the kazoo on what people will do to maintain their secondary gains. We had one guy we... Well, I shouldn't mention him because he's world famous. But one night he got on the Hollywood freeway driving in the wrong direction and committed suicide by running head on into another car, but he didn't call it suicide and his insurance policy paid off his family. Killed four people in the un incoming car simply because we'd taken his cancer away from him and he didn't want to live. That happened a long time ago using a different piece of apparatus. This has happened over and over and over and over. You just might well get used to death in Texas that a lot of the people, 85% of them, that hear about this are going to find some reason for putting it off and never trying it. Oh, we want to see more studies. Well, look, here's a hundred more. Oh, that's not enough. We want to see a thousand studies. And this can go on indefinitely. Like people who were talking about saucers when I was a kid. Well, why don't we have a visual sighting here and a radar sighting and an airline captain that got a pick? We do. Oh, well, we need some more reports. You know, they just don't want to believe in anything like this. Take back your power. And everything you need to know is in this paper. And we have enough left there, the outvoted paper. And uh, I really suggest that you get them. I'm going to leave a bunch with Mark for his library. Now, I think we'll talk about the mortal blood for a minute. This is too startling, but it's provable. Anything that I'm telling you tonight can be proven. Mike Seiler, S-E-I-L-L-E-R, Boulder, Colorado went to Michael Coyle, Dr. C-O-Y-L-E in Boulder, who is one of the most famous dark field microscopists in America. He spends half of the year going around from city to city, teaching naturopaths, homeopaths, medical doctors, chiropractors to use dark field microscopy for diagnostic purposes. He knows where are these speaks. He's written the manuals that are in your medical libraries. He publishes a teaching manual that he gives with his several hundred dollar course over a weekend that tells you what you're looking at and what to do about it. He pricked Michael Seiler's finger, put this drop of blood on the bottom of a microscope slip, the cover slide, thin glass that goes on top. Put that on a microscope slide, wrote the date, and Mike's name on it. They were both named Mike. He looked at it, looked at it, went all around the field with the substage positioner, and said, well, I didn't do this right. Let's try another finger. Drop of blood, you slide. This is very strange. Let me try your earlobe. Drop of blood, you slide. He said, there's no background clutter in your blood. What the hell have you been doing? Mike says, well, I've been using the blood cleaner. I built it myself. Well, you don't have any parasites. I don't see any, I don't see any viruses. I, he couldn't see viruses. That required higher magnification electron microscopy. But I don't see pathogens, bacteria, germs, no rods, nothing. So they puzzled over it and said, well, my God, somebody's finally doing something here that works. Better give me some of those. I've got some terminal cancer patients. He did. Blood is a toxic substance in most states. It requires a man who has a license to come around and collect these used slides, like once a month, take them and incinerate them so the disease won't be spread around. Hospitals used to dump their junk in the ocean before the law was passed. Mike Coyle looked at his box of toxic slides. The man hadn't been around that month. I think he was sick. And three slides close to the top were still orange color instead of brown and dark. And he looked at those things, and he took one up out of the waste box, put it on his microscope stage. The blood was still alive. He looked at the name, and it was our good friend, Mike Seiler. And he called Mike, and he said, Mike, a very strange thing has happened. The half-life of blood is just a few days. 